Hi, this is Gary. Welcome you back with the Deal Funders, and this is uh, video two of a three-part lesson. Uh, we're trying to give you some information to help you with your real estate investment, and uh, hopefully you are learning some things. If you have not went to video one, please go back, and in the uh, email message that you found, go back and watch video one, and then come back and watch video two uh, to try to keep it in progression of what we're trying to do. But this is the second part of a three-part series, and what we want to do is we want to try to give you um, a, a knowledge that will help you in real estate. I think every time you watch a video or every time you learn something new, it makes you better at real estate. And I'm hoping that that's what these do for you that will give you something that is uh, usable in your, in your real estate investing career. By the way, I'd go get a pencil and a paper. I think it's real important. I'm going to give you some formulas and some things and some websites to look at and things to help you. Now, I'm not going to cut this video. I'm going to just stay live with you. And uh, with live, you get a lot of mistakes. You're going to find out that I'm kind of a cut up and a card and a lot of fun. Listen, if you can't have fun doing real estate and making great money, do something else. Do something you love. But if you want to do real estate, I want to try to give you the things that will help with that um, to make that you know, uh, uh, possible. Um, I probably could sell these videos and give out this information and put, put them up in a class and people learn from them. But what I'm trying to do is just give you some free information that you can use today, that you can go and put into practice and go, wow, that's awesome. Man, that's great. And hopefully it changes some of the things that you're doing. So if you got your pen and paper, uh, we're going to get going. Now, remember, if you didn't watch the video, want to go back. And if, you, if you're on video two here, video three will be coming and maybe a few more. I'm going to try to give those out. Don't miss the next video, by the way. The next video is going to be how to find the money. I'm going to teach you how your retirement is walking around you every day. So give me opportunity to show you not just how to find the properties, as we did in the last one, to talk with the realtors and find something that's valuable. But in this one is actually to look at the deal that you have now and see if it's in the right place. And then the third one, of course, is if you got the right deal in the right place, you need the money. And so uh, bear with me. We'll get to that one when we uh, get around there. Today I want to talk about... Um, and by the way, I'm in Florida right now. Uh, we're looking at an assisted living facility down here uh, in Florida, and uh, we're uh, excited about that. It's about a $6.5 million play. Uh, we're also looking at some houses down here. Got a great, great realtor here in town in uh, Cape Coral and Fort Myers. And uh, Phil, he's uh, giving a little plug there. And uh, exceptional guy. And so we, we've got a lot of things going on. And I want you to be as active as we are and get out there and do real estate. You know, the problem is most people get so caught up in all the, the humdrum. And I think I took a little bit out of that in the last video is, is don't spend all your time looking for the houses. Let a realtor spend her time or his time looking for the houses. And you get out there and be aggressive in making the offers and finding the right properties. So today we're going to talk about the market, where it is, how to place it in the market, and then how to sell it in the market. And that's our plan of the day and see if we can do this. If you've got your pen and paper, let's get going. First, I want you to write down the website bestplaces.net bestplaces.net all one word and if you go there you're going to find uh, information by zip code I like to do it by zip code you can do it by city you can do it by county uh, but I like to do it by zip code I like to find out what houses are selling in each zip code that I want to work so maybe you're going to be right around where your house is and you put in your uh, zip code there if your town is smaller maybe you can put in your town so if you want to work in your backyard, that's great. But if you want to look in a whole different state from where you are right now, it's also going to work because it's going to show you some things. Now, let me go through and give you, when you get on that site, you're going to have multiple choices there, a couple of lines of words to choose from. And one of those is housing. So we want to go to housing and click on housing. Now, it'd be good if you could pause the video, open up your web browser, go to bestplaces.net, and then follow through with me and, and put in the things that are in that and find what that amount is. So uh, let's, let's go there together, and you, uh, you look it up. I'll give you a second. Bestplaces.net, and then we're going to find out just some quick things because formulas are important to know what you can do, where you can buy houses, and what's going on. All right, item number one I think you need, if you want to write this down, would be you need rentals in the area under housing. So we went to bestplaces.net. We've clicked on our zip code, or we've put in our zip code, and now we went to housing. In housing, we want a rental market to be 30% or higher. So that if something happens, we can't sell our house right away, then we can rent that house. Next, dropping down from that, our next move is we need to plan ahead and know that if we buy this house, we're buying a house in the right market. How are we, how are we gonna know that? If you look down at housing, you'll see that there's percentages. So there'll be housing on the left, 
and it'll say from uh, 40,000 to 60,000, 70 to 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 100, 100 to 150, 150 to 200. It kind of goes like that in some uh, form, different ways on different um, zip codes. What you're looking for is where there's a house that's selling 30% or higher or at least 25% or higher. That means that 25% of the buyers that are out there are buying this house, which is maybe let's say it's a $150,000 house. So you look at $150,000, you come to the other side there, and you'll see that the amount or the percentage is 25%, 25% or higher. You want to make sure that's what that is. And if you uh, go there, you look at that, then the next step we want to do is, is we found that's the house. So maybe we have in, the, in this zip code, 32% uh, of the houses are being bought that are 100 to 150,000. Then we are looking for about a 125, 130, 140,000 dollar house that we can buy below value. Now, if you remember our value from the last uh, video, it was 70% of value minus repairs. All you got to do is take the average value, which would be 100, let's say 130, 140,000 for that area. You go find a house that comps out. Now, let me tell you about comps quickly. You go to a realtor and you ask them to comp the house that you're looking at. They will go and find other houses just like it. You'll be very careful. And I wish I had the time to go into details. It's amazing how much is, it needs to be put into this. But you want to know how to comp out the house and how to know that this house is worth $150,000 or $140,000. So let's say we've comped it out. There's five houses in the area. They sold from $138,000 to 155, dollars And now the average is about $140,000. So we've got uh, 140 is our average. We know that's what it is. We've got to do 140 times 70 percent, 0.7, and then we want to subtract that it needs a kitchen. That's 15,000. Needs a bathroom. That's 5,000. We're going to take those amounts off, and now we're going to make our offer and go forward with our offer there. But we want to be making offer on houses that we want to buy because they're going to sell. Because just buying a house at a great price does not matter. Remember our $700,000 house? And how that our $700,000 house at $450,000 is not a great deal if $700,000 houses are not selling. So we want to go in and jump in on the ones that are selling and keep going after those. And remember, we're making offers on REOs, all the REOs we can get our hands on. Now, I think this will change your way of investing if you'll just look and make sure that you're buying the right house in the right market. I see so many people, they buy a house in the wrong market and it doesn't go good. And how do I know that? I know that because I failed. I made mistakes just like you will and just like maybe you have. And I, I failed. I'm trying to train you or teach you from my failures to try to help you to be better and, uh, and, and make it better for you. I don't know about you, but I'd rate rather make more profit than less profit and uh, I, I hope that uh, I hope that you want to do that too. Well now we have our house we want to go through and if you go back and you go back to the beginning there and look up person we're wanting to look at the people so anybody that, that if you go click on the thing that is people in the same zip code now we want to look across there and some things that we have and I just want to give you a, a, a quick um, rundown of how you can kind of see what they are. Let me, let me give it to you. It's a formula, so you're going to have to write it down. It is important when you're writing these down that you don't get it wrong. So let's do it. It is household income, which is HI, divided by household size, which is uh, HS. If you look on there, you'll see household size. So it is HI divided by HS, that gives you what they should be making. Then we take that and we go times 1.85. Let me tell you why. If there's two people in the home making an income, one's probably making more than the other. So I don't give them both the full amount of income. I give one a full income of the average of that area, and I give another one 85% of an income. So somebody's taking the kids to the doctor, somebody's running them to the playground or to the park or to sports or doing something or handling them for school. So they're, they're, one paycheck is normal, that's one, and the other paycheck is 85%, so 1.85%. And then I take that formula, and I now have, have my household income divided by my household size times 1.85 gives me a total of the things that are in the house. Now, if there's anything that's over, sometimes the household uh, uh, size will be 2.7. Well, we know that that 0.7 is probably a kid that doesn't bring any money, so we don't even count that. That's why we use the 1.85 once we get the, the amount of money divided out by household income divided by household size. Now we take that amount that we have and we want to do it times 0.3 and here's why. 30% of the income, now they say it's 35 or 38 or 40%. I like to stay very conservative with my houses. So 30% of the income. So I take that amount 
now times 0.3. And what that gives me is what someone spends in a year. Remember, we're talking about household income for a year. So that gives me what in one year they spend. After they, they we know what that amount they, they spend for a year, we divide that by 12. Now let me give you the whole formula. I explained the formula. Let me try to give it to you. It is household income divided by household size times 1.85 times 0.3 divided by 12. It's that simple. What that gives you is what amount of payment they can make every single month because you want to buy a house that people can afford. Now, we found the house. We found the right market. Now, how do we price it? If you want to sell a house fast, it needs to be $15,000 under fair market value or after repair value. And so you're going to need to mark that house down ten dollars or $15,000. If you want to... Um, take a little time and get a little more out of the house, then you can ask the, the normal amount uh, for the house. If you're one of these guys that like to uh, carry the note and be the guy who carries the note in the background and you have enough money to carry the note, then you might want to offer a little bit more. Even if there's a house across the street for $150, your house is exactly the same house. If I was going to carry the note, my house would be about $165 because I want more money if I'm taking more chances. And it's just like uh, you know uh, anybody else. There's nothing wrong with padding yourself and making sure that you're covered uh, on your income. So if we're going to market the house now, we're going to go to get a realtor. We're going to list it with a realtor, um, and we're going to try to make that house a little under value. So this, as we talked about, our house average is 140. We've now fixed our house up. We've got about 100,000 in it. Let's sell it for 135. 135 will make our house the nicest house, maybe, or one of the nicest houses on the market, but 5,000 below everybody else. Sometimes that gets a frenzy of people offering more money because they don't want to lose it and be beat out by somebody else. Sometimes you get exactly what you're offering, and sometimes in some cities you get less. So you want to make sure that you remember you've decided what your amount is after you pay your realtor their 6%. Now you want to say, what is my amount? Now let me tell you something. This is very important. I, pay, I like to pay realtors every time. I want to make sure they're getting paid every single time. You know why? Because the more I pay them, the more deals they find for me. Every, everybody's got some kind of wrong idea of going out and, and taking money from a realtor. I don't want to take money from a realtor. I want the realtor to make some money right along beside me so that they'll go find me more deals. So I take that 6% off. Now, whatever I have left, I just have to make sure that it meets my criteria. And remember, our threshold that we wanted for the amount of money that we want to make on each house. That's all there is to it. It is going and finding the right house, making the offers, stepping from the offers right into is it the right house in the right zip code in the right area for the right price. And if it is, bring it just a little bit under market value, turn around and sell the house quickly and make you, you some money. There's so many more things I wish I could tell you. Uh, I, I wish I had more time than what we're doing on these videos. Um, come back on the next video, video three. Don't miss it, how to get the money. And let me help you show you how you're walking around in retirement every day and you don't even know that the people that are around you could be the next person that takes you where you want to go. This is Gary DeBose of the Deal Funders. And remember, we want to fund your deals.